we are looking at redox reactions, which is also called electrochemistry. And to do that, we quickly have to look at the definitions again. So a redox reaction is a transfer of electrons, which means something gives electrons and something takes electrons. So if you don't have a change in the charge, and that's often asked in a multiple choice question, then you know it's not a redox reaction because if something gains electrons, it's going to become more negative. If something loses electrons, it's going to become more positive. So the two half reactions that forms a redox, react, redox reaction would be oxidation, which is then the loss of electrons, reduction, that is the gain of electrons. Now, if you look at your table, you will see that all of these reactions are written as reduction of reactions. So if you look, lithium plus gains an electron to form lithium, a lithium atom. So it gained an electron, which is reduction. So whenever you read these reactions from the left to the right, it's going to be a reduction half reaction. If we do it the other way around, if we start anywhere here, we see that zinc, for instance, is going to form a zinc 2 plus ion, but it's going to also lose two electrons. So if you read it on from this way, from the right to the left, then it's always going to be an oxidation half reaction. So those are two half reactions that together gives us the redox reaction. Now, the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent, if something like zinc for in this case, zinc is giving off an electron. Now, if something else, so zinc is being oxidized, but for it to be oxidized, it needs something else to take up those electrons. And that something else will then be called the oxidizing agent. But if something takes up electrons, it is in itself being reduced. So that would bring what's bring that is what bring us to the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So the oxidizing agent accepts electrons. So that means it's gaining electrons. So if you look at our definition, oxidizing agent gains electrons. So the oxidizing agent is reduced. The reducing agent donates electrons, which means it's giving them off, and the loss of electrons is oxidation. So this sentence here is super, super important, or those sentences. The oxidizing agent, therefore, is always going to be reduced, and the reducing agent is always going to be oxidized. So now if we go and look at our table again, you have two arrows that tells you which substances would rather be reduced and which substances would rather be oxidized. So you are going to look at these arrows. So if you look at the arrow pointing down, it tells you increasing oxidizing ability. So what you can actually do is say stronger oxidizing agent. And on this side, the arrow points up and it says increasing reducing ability. So again, you can say increasing reducing agent because they are the reducing agents are actually oxidized and the oxidizing agent are reduced and the arrow tells us which ones would rather be reduced and which ones would rather be oxidized so what i want you to do when you get your table immediately when you get your um, information sheet i want you to write here the stronger oxidizing agent they already tell you oxidizing ability so you're just changing the words a little bit the stronger oxidizing agent will rather be, and I'm hoping that you can say it, reduced. And the stronger reducing agent would rather be oxidized. And in an explanation of, an, of why something will react rather than something else, you can always use these two sentences because you're going to have to compare the oxidizing agent strength with the of two substances or the reducing agent strength of two substances. Now the E naught value is basically telling us how the reactions will happen. So if you look at the positive value here, it means that these substances want to gain electrons, so they would rather be reduced, remember, because they're oxidizing agents. So now when you get a question and everything spontaneous reactions and non-spontaneous reactions they all based on what i'm going to tell you now and 
if you follow this, you can get nothing wrong. You're going to find your substances. It doesn't matter if they give you 20 substances, but normally you have a maximum of four or five. So in, in a solution, we will always have water. So please also remember that if you have a reaction with water present, then you can't ignore the water in the reaction. And you can't always assume that these SO4s, NA, um, NO3s and all those polyatomic ions are spectator ions because sometimes they will react. So you still need to go and find them. The only thing you need to look out is if it says plus H plus. So some of these reactions will need extra things before they can react. And if they, the question doesn't give you those extra things, then you can't work with it. So if you see that the reaction has been acidified, you've done acids and bases, and you know that hydrogen ions could, an acid can give you a hydrogen ion. So if they say acidified, then you know you have some hydrogens available. Otherwise, those reactions cannot be taken into consideration. Now, if you find your substances, I'm going to make up substances just to show you the method. So let's say we have aluminium. Also, if you have aluminium, you don't have aluminium ions. Be very careful. You only circle the substances that you actually have. So if they say I have aluminium metal, I only have aluminium. If they say that I have a tin solution, that means I only have tin iron. So it would be something like tin sulfate or tin nitrate. Remember, ions can't exist on their own. So let's say it was tin nitrate, which means I will have tin ions, the SN2 pluses, but I will also have nitrate ions. Don't ignore them. And as soon as you see the word solution, you know that there are waters as well. Now, let's see which waters we can actually use. And if you look at the table, we can go all the way down. There's a water here that only needs electrons. So that one we can use. Now, if you go down, 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 this water here requires oxygen. So we can't use that reaction. So we'll ignore it for this question or any question that doesn't give you oxygen. And then... Please remember H2O2 is not water, it's peroxide. So that water is the only one on the left-hand side, on the oxidizing agent side, that we could use in this type of reaction. Then we go over to this side, and we're going to say, I have water again. I have another water. These waters, can you see that we're not going to really deal with them? Because those waters need chromium ions, they need NO, and we don't have those things. You always look on the same side as the water. So I don't need, I don't have those things, so I can't use th those reactions. So I have now got all my substances. Once you've got those substances, you've done the hard work. All you have to now go and do is look at your arrows. So you're going to say, I look at my arrow, and my uh, the one that is the strongest reducing agent will rather be oxidized. Use your sentence. Stronger reducing agent rather be oxidized. So my oxidation half reaction is going to be the aluminium one because it's the highest in the table and it will be rather oxidized. And then if I look here, the stronger oxidizing agent would rather be reduced. So I'm going to look for the lowest one. But remember we said we cannot use the NO3s, even though they're there, not because they're always spectator ions, but because I don't have the H pluses available. So those two reactions I won't use. So the tin would be my strongest oxidizing agent and therefore would rather be reduced. So yeah, I would then write my reaction from the left to the right. So I will have Al that forms Al3+, plus, plus the three electrons. And I will have my reduction reaction, which is Sn2+, plus, plus two electrons forming Sn. And that's the basis of redox reactions. All that they would require now of you is to go and balance the electrons. I think this you all found easy. You would then say, oh, I need to make this six, so therefore I'm going to times everything else by three. I need to make this six as well, so I'm going to multiply everything by two. And then you can write your net 
ionic equation. We call it an ionic equation because we write it in ionic form. So you can then write everything on the left hand side 2Al plus 3Sn2 plus will form 2Al3 plus plus 3S. In. There are many of these examples in the in your notes and everything that we've done. So you need to understand the method. This works for spontaneous and non-spontaneous. But why? How do we now find whether something is spontaneous and when something is not spontaneous? So spontaneous reaction means you have something that would rather be oxidized, meaning it will give off electrons. So a strong reducing agent with a strong oxidizing agent because for something to be able to give off electrons this way something else must take up those electrons so if you find two things on the table like this and a quick way of seeing it if you are in a in a, in a multiple choice question for instance if you see a positive gradient immediately you know it's a spontaneous reaction so it will be chemical energy converted into electrical energy if you end up with something here yeah, that would rather not be reduced and something here yeah, that would rather not be oxidized so this one would would rather go this way remember and this one wants to be this way so this one wants to give off electrons but it's going to give off electrons if something below will take up those electrons this one wants to take up electrons but it needs something at the top to give those electrons so if we find it here like the purple i know this is becoming quite messy hope you're still following and it's a negative gradient then we know quickly that it is a non-spontaneous reaction. You can go and do it properly and you can quickly go and work out the E0 value. The E0 value we, is the standard electrode potential and these values are at standard temperature and pressure and concentration. Standard conditions means the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, a concentration of one mole per cubic decimeter if it is a solution and a, a pressure of one atmosphere if it is a gas so if those conditions are true then we can use these values and we can just use go and use the equation on your information sheet and say e cell is e cathode which is my reduction half reaction so in this case for tin it would have been 0. Minus 0.14, and for anode is my oxidation half reaction, so that would have been minus 1.66. So minus 1.14 minus minus 1.66 will give me a positive answer, which again shows me that it was a spontaneous reaction. So if you get a positive answer for your standard electrode potential of your cell, you know it is a spontaneous reaction and if you get a negative answer then you know it is a non-spontaneous reaction now but we're going to now in the next video look at spontaneous reactions in more detail and but if you follow these rules that we've just said for all the reactions then you can never get your half reactions wrong so remember step one write your oxidation and your reduction half reaction and write your cell reaction so that you once you have that so the questions normally becomes easy just two definitions that we didn't look at the electrolyte we normally work in liquids because ions can only move in liquids ions cannot travel in wires please please remember that so ions move in solution so when i have an ionic substance it will split up into its ions and you need to do that as soon as you get the question we've practiced that a lot and that is then dissociation dissociation is when you have an ionic substance and it splits up into its ions when you either melt it or dissolve it so for liquids or aqs we will have an electrolyte because that's uh, that liquid will be able to conduct electricity and that's going to be the end of the first part